I want to talk about the difference between Himalayan sea salt and just regular sea salt. Is there a difference? There is. It's a big difference. The great majority of both of these have sodium chloride. They both have trace minerals. But sea salt has microplastics or nano amounts of plastic. In one study, it showed that 90% of all the brands that were tested had microplastics. However, in Himalayan sea salt, zero plastics. Why? Because of the deposits that make up the Himalayan salt comes from an ancient sea before humans, before the pollution. Now, the problem with microplastics is that it gets into our system. It creates inflammation. It creates a lot of problems because it can act as an endocrine disruptor. And it does take a little bit of time to degrade and break down, about 500 years. So what you need to do is limit your exposure to it. So I do not recommend consuming sea salt unless it's Celtic sea salt, or it could be pronounced Celtic. This is okay. This is from France. It's cleaner. There's probably some others that are fine too, but regular sea salt comes from the ocean, which is polluted, and chances are it will have microplastics, so you want to avoid that. Now, that then brings up uh, the question about table salt. What about that? It's the majority of the population is just consuming table salt. They have no idea that that too has microplastics, no trace minerals, just sodium chloride. It's bleached some of the time. They even add sugar to it some of the time. And sometimes they add an anti-caking agent, aluminum, which is toxic to your brain. So what I'm trying to do is increase your awareness and focus in on a healthy salt because we need salt. We need it to make hydrochloric acid in our stomach to actually kill off microbes, help us digest protein and assimilate minerals. Our adrenals need a certain amount of salt. Our immune system needs a certain amount of salt. If we're low on salt, the risk of getting insulin resistance goes up. Salt helps with hydration. Also, it's involved in the sodium potassium pump, which is needed to power your muscles and your nerves and give us energy. Now, how much salt do we need? We need between one and two teaspoons, depending on your activity level, how much you're sweating. But when you do keto, you want to do at least one teaspoon, if not a little bit more, each day. Because of all the water weight that you're losing, and with the water weight loss comes a loss of electrolytes as well. Now, a couple of things that you can do in addition to avoiding exposure to microplastics, because it's in the water from the plastic bottles that you're using, and also the canned water. It's in a lot of different things, especially if you're using uh, microwaves with plastics and even styrofoam cups. If you have good, friendly bacteria, there's been some studies that show that certain microbes in your microbiome can help break down some of these plastics. Number two, consuming cruciferous food on a regular basis helps to dismantle and eliminate endocrine disruptors in general. And also, consuming enough omega-3 has a tendency to keep your inflammation down because one of the problems with microplastics is inflammation. And so if you counter that with taking things that keep your inflammation low, you can minimize the damage to some degree. But definitely don't consume just regular sea salt. Go with the Himalayan salt or go with some other salts like Celtic salts that don't have microplastics. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto, or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.